Hi, this is Jewel Dirks with the Steinway Goat Channel and with this video I'm going to show how to make a super duper warbonnet blackbird fly that will uh, cover four goats, three dogs, and a human and her hammock. This is up at the Snowy Range. We're about 10,800 feet and a cloud had just enveloped the entire camp all at once. It was just beautiful to see that. It was real surprising. It just came in all of a sudden. You'll be able to see the goats here in a couple minutes just uh, uh, looking around in amazement just like I was. Usually in the snowy range, it's really, really windy. So we were lucky we didn't have the wind that day. Makes for a different tarp setup than the one I'm going to show you. Here you'll be able to see the goats kind of looking around. Looking, literally looking at sky and looking to see what is this. Great fun. Well, one of the problems of camping with goats is that uh, if you have a separate fly for the goats, they don't want to stay in that. They want to come over and, and be with the humans. And if you have a fly that's too small, the goats really butt each other around and uh, it gets really hard. And of course, the dogs take the last uh, part and they, they are often stuck out in the rain somewhere to fend for themselves. So in this camping site, I tried to figure out a, a place uh, to hang the hammock and I realized that the only spot that I had was one where I was going to have to hang between two trees that were really far away. And so I had to see uh, if I could do that. And that I invited me to think about putting two tarps on one high line. So that's what I'm going to show right here. The other problem with goats is that if you have any ropes or cords hanging down or tying down, they will walk into them like it's weeds and, and, and rip your tarp up. And so the ropes and the cords always have to be tied high. So this shows how there's enough room in there. And here's the hammock tied. It's tied close to that far tree. Now looking back, I'll turn around in a minute. Now you'll see how far away it is hung to the other tree. And those warbonnet blackbirds are good people for putting straps on. Now the dark blue tarp is tied on top of the light blue and so you can see the, the line holding that uh, dark blue tarp uh, coming all the way, yeah here's a better picture of it, going all the way up to the tree and then this next shot will show you what's going on underneath that. There it is. You can see the white rope is the one for the dark tarp, the, and uh, the orange rope acts as a high line for both tarps. So it's going all the way to the other end, and you'll see that in just a second here. So that's holding up both tarps. There's a light blue tarp, which is on the bottom, and then the other one. Here's the other end, the trucker's hitch there. And those trucker's hitch, by the way, if you put an extra figure eight in there, they're a lot easier to get apart. So you can see again how long that is. Now here's that line, that picture again. The yellow rope is holding the blue on, and here's the other end of the blue. And at that point, I've got to have a plastic hitch, uh, plastic knot there, so that's uh, showing how that's tied there. I could tighten that up later on uh, in the day I did. And prussic knots, as you know, have to work. They work best if the knot itself is much smaller uh, rope than the than the rope it's hanging on to. Now here's some of the tie-down ropes in the back. A little shortcut there. Now I put clips on these, so I clip that on, and you can see a, a slip knot there with a little white rope. And so when I want to undo that, all I have to do is unclip it. I don't have to mess around with the knots, and then it's going down to the stake that's in the ground. 
And this is one of the ropes that is uh, vulnerable to the goats walking into it, so I want to be able to clip that and unclip that real fast. Now the next little shot here will show uh, another clip. I've got just a uh, girth cinch there holding the clips together. And so when I want to undo that, all I have to do is unclip the, the clips. I don't have to mess with the ropes here. I've got it tied on the side. And there's that shot of that back and those those two vulnerable ropes. You can see the patches where the goats come through. And it's always that goat. So Pico will come out. He won't pay any attention to that rope. He'll just walk straight through it. So here comes the little old fat camper. And she's going to put that up. I could put that up, clip that up on top. But it's hooked to the little dog vestibule there. So I'm just going to tie that in. Couldn't remember where I put my clips, so otherwise I'd have a clip there so I could do that real fast. Then I'm going to walk over to the other vulnerable rope and unclip that. And that one I'll, I'll, I'll uh, clip that to a, a high line there. And I'm reaching inside there to uh, pull the rest of the tent kind of away from the hammocks because when I let those uh, ropes down, or untake those ground ropes, then it really hangs in, dropped it. It really hangs in too close to the hammock, so I'm pulling that out, and that skyline rope will help keep that dropped it again. And so that skyline rope will help keep it away. Excuse me, that high line will help hold the, uh, the tent up from the hammock. There, when I've got it up like that. Here that shows that highlight, and it's on a clip, so I can get that off real easily. And then that tree hugger is tied on a branch way above the, the hammock. I have to get a trekking pole to get that down when I'm done. So here's the other side of the ham the, the whole setup. And uh, the, you can tell that the ropes are real high, so they're not nearly as vulnerable. This one I could let loose. It's keeping it tight just real loosely on that little tree. And I'd lost track of where I kept my clips, so... This one I just put a, a little slip knot in so I can get that off real easily and uh, let that down. And that goes up to this trench that I had to catch the water from the higher tent and then that way the water will go down on that side. So here it is with everything up. The goat's still thinking it's going to rain. There's room enough in there even for my pack. And here it is raining so you can see how it's successful doing that. Sometimes I don't, I'm not successful and the rain drains down on the goats, that's not good. Mm. And given enough space, these, everybody is happy. So I've got dogs and small goats and big goats and bully goats all in here together, and me. Unfortunately, it wasn't blowing. If it was blowing and raining, it's a different setup. My little trench working quite well. And finally, the sun came out. I was thinking with this, and when I was looking at this, I thought, boy, a person could, this is so long in here, it's hard for me to sh show you how long this is, but a person could sit two hammocks in there end to end. You'd have to use different ropes, but they would sure fit, it's that long. And this one is, a, I've got it set a lot higher, so I can just walk right into it, you'll see me in a minute. And if it started to rain sideways, like it does in the mountains there, then I, I would really have to lower the tarps and uh, pull it down to the ground. But, boy, it, it wasn't going to rain at all, and I just was setting it up so I could show what this was doing. Here I am trying to show you what it looks like from on top. And then I've got two ropes. That, most of the ropes are, are up, and there's that side one there, and there's that spot where I had to patch it. And just simple slip knots. But I've got two ropes there on the side that are vulnerable to goats roaring through them. So you can see I've got the clip there 
and I put the clip on then I put the rope through and tighten it up and just put a slip knot in and there's the other side that's a, a girth knot up at the top and here's I slipped the rope through that clip that was tied on to the tree hugger tightened it up and then when I take these off I'll just unclip them and uh, this time I think, oh and the goat is helping me do some filming here uh, and that's that same goat that always likes to rip through and this one all I, can, all I have to do is clip it to the top there on that top high line and don't have to mess around with it you'll see me reach up there and just clip that in there it is easy Now I'm going to tell you just a little bit about the hammock. Uh, I made my own um, underquilt for it, and then I uh, put, uh, you know, some stretch cords on it, and put an outside tarp, just a simple tarp I got at Walmart, to protect the the hammock and the underquilt from the goats, because the goats tend to think that I'm a big rubbing post when I'm in there, and they'll come along and rub. Uh, and push me around, but it's just really pleasant to have them swinging the hammock. And here I'm showing uh, how there's a little air space in there so that uh, it'll let the condensation out and the air will act as a, a good insulator in there too. And it's it just with uh, the little bungee cords on uh, on both sides. That uh, that underquilt I've got clipped on uh, on the sides and clipped on. Uh, you'll see these these clips here. Showing once again how I can just do that on both sides. And and here's where it, I show that how it's clipped on. The first one there that's the hammock, and then reaching inside here that's the underquilt made from my sleeping bag. That's a trick. And uh, then I've got little uh, tabs and little clips so that they are always stuck in there. And see how I've got that huge in there. And that, that keeps it in line real well. Then I've got a nice stretch cord here that goes over the top line of the hammock. And I just have it clipped there during the day. And then at night I can pull it around and just uh, scoop that stuff up to me so I'm never cold. I've been in the coldest weather I've been in. I had an indoor-outdoor uh, thermometer and it was 27 degrees outside. By the dogs froze the water, poor guys, and the goats. But I was uh, at 54 inside the tent, in, inside the hammock. So, it was, And I had the hammock, just the thermometer hanging from above. I also put a cord in to keep the feet part together, uh, but the goats ripped it apart. And so I've just got it hanging there on one side, and that still does keep it in place real well. Here I'm showing that again, and there's a real nice view of that. And I've got some stretch cords on that to give it a little leeway. And then inside the hammock, between the two layers, I put a soft uh, foam that I got at Walmart again. That's our only store in my little town. Uh, that was in the bedding department, and there you'll, you'll see me packing it up. And that thing's very, very light, and uh, but boy, it sure keeps me warm. And I can pack it down. I'll put it in a, a compression bag there that will get it on on both sides, and it's got three straps on it. So, and probably the bag weighs more than the little foam pads. Cause, and, but that foam pad is is quite nice. I'm trying to show how light it is. Now here I'll be folding up the tarps, and sorry it's dark, but uh, they're unfolding one end clear all the way over to the other end, and then I'll straighten it out, and then I'll fold that end over one one more time, and be able to stra straighten it out, and then I'll just pull it up. I don't ever worry about the ropes or the cords; they don't ever tangle up, so I just make a circle again. And same thing here. 
Again, sorry for the shadows. You can see in the background there's a beautiful lake here. It doesn't have any fish in it, but oh, it's just gorgeous. And this time, this that is a huge uh, tarp. It's heavy duty. It's not lightweight. It probably weighs two or three pounds. And uh, I I keep big big ropes on it instead of those little tiny cords and, uh, because it man that can kill your hands trying to tighten that thing up. And here you can see me just folding it over, folding it over. And hanging it like this really helps me keep it straight so that when I uh, pack it into the goat pack, it's really a pretty compact uh, pack there. And you'll see this time I'm able to, I'm just accordioning that up, and I'll be able to just uh, lay it there on top of the high line and then walk over to the other side and then pack it up from that point. And here I'll show the uh, snake skins I made. The, uh, these are homemade and I probably get them a lot easier buying them and, and I always come with a big wad of my homemade uh, tree huggers which are really nice. The snake skins are good. They, it's really nice to have those. And I always travel. I always recommend that you travel with a spot locator even if you're traveling with a buddy, that if you get into trouble, you can instantly get help from these guys. And it's a cheap way to give your family a lot of reassurance. There's a guy that died of a heart attack recently, and the family went out looking for him, took a few days. And if he'd had that, they would have found him immediately. So that's it. I'll leave you with just a minute. Let's see, I think it's just about a minute of pictures of the goats. And sure appreciate you watching, and good luck with your goat packing. Bye.